Ava. The air was quiet as I sat in my cabin, the hum of machinery being the only sound as I calmly stared at the wall. What a mess the past seven or eight hours has been. If it wasn't preventing pirates from boarding, was helping Alex with his mech. And if it wasn't that it's watching him almost get killed by some spiteful crewmates. Life was so much simpler when the Terrans were just an enigma that not even mind readers could suss out. With all this mulling over in my mind, I couldn't help but long for what life would be like without today happening. I would be blissfully ignorant of the Terran's true nature and had a good friend in Alex, even without the knowledge of what he really was underneath that suit of armor. I was so engrossed in my thoughts that I barely heard my communicator going off. I looked down at it despondently. I did a double take at the name on it. It was my parents. I hesitated for a moment before finally accepting the call. The hologram flickered to life as I saw my parents, their once vibrant and colorful feathers turning gray as they aged. Hey, Mom, hey, Dad, I managed to get out. Mom's crest immediately flared out in concern as she saw my expression. Dear, are you all right? We heard about the pirate attack on the shooting star and what happened with the Terran on board, she shouted. We've been trying to reach you the entire time, but there was a lot going on, what with the freeze on trade with United Terra, and we've only been able to get this call in now, Dad explained. I gave a heavy sigh that caused my crest to droop. I'm okay, but things have been extremely difficult. I'm sure that you've heard this already, but apparently the armored void suits that the Terrans wear are mechanical robots, the size of the average person, and the actual Terran sits in a tiny chair in the head. Can you believe that? And they're so small, too. I could probably carry 30 without breaking a sweat. And to think that I was the one to discover it, and that the Terran would want to be my friend after his cover was blown. I gave a whistle of shock. I suppose that I didn't really process everything that happened until just now. My voice started to shake. And now, he's lost his job and probably going to be court-martialed, all because he tried doing the right thing when we fought off those pirates. It sounds like you have a lot going on right now, Dad said more as a statement than a question. Oh, stars, Dad, you have no idea. Tears were starting to form in my eyes. Everything has been happening so fast that I haven't really been able to do anything but react. Mom's expression softened as she saw that I was on the verge of tears. Well, dear, you know that we love you, and by the stars, we wish that we were there for you, but that's just not possible right now. Find yourself a crewmate that you can be vulnerable with, and just talk with them. I'm sure that it'll be for your good. Your mother's right, you know, Dad said as his feathers splayed out a bit. By the way, how long until you get some shore leave? I can't imagine that it's very fun being cooped up in that ship for very long. I gave a weak sniffle. I'll have to do that, I said. And to answer your question, I'll be getting some shore leave in about three weeks on the Terran diplomat ship, The Strength Through Diplomacy. I was about to talk some more, but I heard a loud knock on the door of my cabin. Oh, that's probably for me. I've got to go, but thanks for calling. It really does mean a lot to me. Take care of yourself, Ava, Dad said. I speak for both of us when I say we will always love you and support whatever decision that you end up making. I gave them an appreciative nod and ended the call before sighing heavily. I got up from the bed and made my way over to the door. I opened it, and instead of another crew member, there sat Alex the Terran, in his mech, looking up at me expectantly. The mech looked as if it had somehow gotten even worse in the hour that I hadn't seen it. Perhaps he got into a fight with one of the crewmates? Hey, Ava, I'm sorry to bother you right now, but I was wondering if I could talk to you, he asked. Sure, I said, as I motioned for him to come in. I headed over to the bed, while Alex parked himself in front of the desk, where he placed his hand. There was a hiss as the cockpit opened to reveal the Terran climbing down its arm until he came to a stop on the desk where he sat in that strange, cross-legged position that he seemed to favor for one reason or another. There was silence for a moment before I decided to break it. So, one hell of a day it's been, hasn't it? I asked deciding to take some of the phrases that he seemed to favor when it came to expletives. He gave a small chuckle. You can say that again. 
I just hope that it all works out in the end, I suppose, he said while he fidgeted with his hands. Silence reigned once again, as we both seemed too exhausted, both physically and emotionally, to speak. I think I found myself a job that I can keep paying the bills with, he finally said, breaking the comfortable silence that we had around us. It took some doing and begging the captain for, but I managed to get something going since I can't do security now. Oh, really? Doing what? I asked him as I turned my head to look at him. I'm going to be looking at the security cameras all day, every day to report any wrongdoing to the captain or security, depending on how bad it is. He gave another non-committal shrug. Or at least that's the plan if the captain can get the head of security on board with it all, he explained as he continued to fidget with his hands. Why do you even need this job anyways? It's not like you can use it on most products that the galaxy uses. He gave a non-committal shrug and gestured to the mech. Well, I already explained it to the captain, and I don't really want to explain it again, or at least not in detail. Basically, I owe a lot of money to the company that made the mech, and I can't default on those debts. He gave a big yawn. God, I'm tired. He stood up and made his way back over to the mech, climbing over it before finally being interred in it. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Do you want to do breakfast then? I nodded. Yeah, I would like that. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. I guess so. Alex. I woke to the sound of the alarm on my phone going off. I groaned as I rolled over to my other side as I tried to muffle the noise. That would have worked if this were the 21st century. I did research into how people lived back then, and it was a miracle that humanity has gotten to where it is now with how much sleep we did back then. Unfortunately for me, my alarm was one from the 23rd century and it would play the most irritating sound the phone could come up with until my neural implants found me to be in a proper, awake state. And the worst part of the whole thing is that if it played one noise constantly, you would get used to it. So, naturally, to counteract such a glaring oversight, if it detects that you're getting used to a noise, then it switches to a different one. There's an old Terran phrase that I feel is very appropriate in times like this. There's no rest for the wicked. All right, all right, I'm up, I said to no one in particular. The alarm turned off shortly after. For once, I decided to sleep on the bed in the cabin instead of the cot I have in the closet, and it was a bit jarring to find myself waking up in here instead of there. Regardless, I sat up and surveyed my room through half-lidded eyes. Everything was just the way that I left it, a complete mess. There were still computer parts and general bric-a-brac scattered across the desk. And once I made my way to the edge of the bed, I saw that I hadn't even tried to clean up the mess of broken mech and shrapnel from the day before. I groaned at the thought of having to clean it up. Mech or no mech, things like cleaning are always a hassle. The last thing that my eyes were drawn to was the mech itself. The ragged hole in the chest was still clearly visible, and other cosmetic damage was visible, but did not compromise the integrity of the marvel of engineering. That's right. I have to get the replacement chest piece. I looked at my phone for any messages that I could have gotten during my sleep to see that there was one from the fabricator crew of the ship. It read, Alex, your requested items have been fabricated and are waiting for you in the fabrication suite for you to pick up at your earliest convenience. Damn, that was quick. The schematic that David sent me must have been a model from a decade ago if it was made that fast. If there was one thing that Terran armor was known for among the population of Terra, it would be that it takes too long to fabricate it in anything other than an autofab on a Terran ship or shipyard, just because of the sheer complexity of the armor plating. That meant that either the design was old or simplified for a galactic community fabricator. Either way, it didn't bode well for the overall quality of the armor, but then again, beggars can't be choosers. I took the elevator down to the ground to get myself some food from the storage unit I had in the closet when I suddenly remembered that I was going to have breakfast with Ava. Shit. Good thing we didn't agree on a time to meet, otherwise I'd be hosed right now. I quickly went through all my hygiene rituals and was out of the door in my mech in less than five minutes. As usual, eyes turned towards me as I made my way through the halls and corridors of the ship. It had never occurred to me that this ship was probably one of the best ones to be crippled on. The corridors were nice and uniform, with no bumps and bulkheads that you have to climb through like on old Terran subs. 
through some twisting and turning hallways that I wouldn't have been able to navigate without the assistance of the real-time map that I had of the ship. I finally made my way to the mess hall. As the elevator doors opened, I noticed that it was much fuller than the last time that I had been there, with nearly every seat taken. The chatter in the room died for a moment as everyone looked at me. It only took a second before I spotted Ava waving their arm at me and gesturing to a seat next to them. I gave them a wave back as I wheeled my way over. I'll sit with you in a second. Just give me a minute to find something to eat. Don't take too long. My food is almost ice cold, they cried in mock impatience. I waved them off as I made my way over to the buffet. Thank God there isn't a line, otherwise this would take forever. I looked over the generous spread before me, consisting of various fruits and vegetables for the herbivores on the crew, along with meats for the obligate carnivores on the crew. I deliberated for a moment before finally settling on the same fruit that I had yesterday, a tadamia, if I'm remembering the name correctly. I picked up a knife as well and made my way back to where Ava was sitting. Morning, I said as I rolled up to the table. Sorry to keep you waiting for so long. I forgot about us meeting up for breakfast until about ten minutes ago. That's okay. Even if we miss the goal that we have in the sky, we'll end up among the stars either way, Ava said while they took a big bite of the meat on their plate. I started to cut up my fruit. What is that? A saying among your people? I asked as I finished cutting up the fruit. Yeah, something like that, but it's only been in our history for seven or eight centuries when we discovered space flight, Ava explained. Very interesting. I said as I popped open the hatch, causing everyone who wasn't already looking at me to stare at me in disbelief. I stared back at one of the crew members as I manipulated the arm of the mech to bring a handful of fruit to me in the cockpit. I took a bite. Damn, just as good as the first time I tried it. So, do you have any big plans for today? I asked. I just have a patrol to be on, nothing too special, I'm afraid. What about you? They asked. I gave a shrug. Well, until the captain decides what to do with me, I don't really have all that much to do besides fix the mech. It'll take me a bit of time to do that, and I'll most likely need some help with that. But if you're busy today, then I can always go over to the engineers to get help. They nodded. That sounds like a pretty solid plan. Do you know when the captain will get back to you yet? I don't have the slightest clue when that'll happen, but hopefully soon, I said as I took another bite. Ava looked down at their communicator and did a double take. Oh, stars, I didn't see the time at all. Ava suddenly stood up and desperately shoveled the rest of the food into their mouth. I'm late, I'll see you later, Ava said as they took off for the elevator. See you when I see you, I shouted after them. I was about to take another bite when my phone went off after a text came in. I looked down at it and saw that it was from the captain. Alex, it started. Your proposal has been considered and has been approved. Please report to the bridge at your earliest convenience. I smiled. Everything's coming up, Alex, 